During today's painting water in oils workshop at my Lewis studio, I splashed a 20 minute demonstration onto a 30 by 42 centimeter canvas of how to paint broken reflections for my students. Unusually, I actually remembered to video it. Here it is without edits. Hi, I'm Tony Parsons. I'm a professional landscape painter and the luckiest man on the planet. I get to travel the world indulging in my favorite obsession and I get paid for it. I would love to teach you to paint in oils and get as much fun out of it as I do. I'm aiming to make a series of videos demonstrating all of the techniques I've discovered, stolen or invented to make my painting experiences so much fun. I'll be giving you a pile of hints, tips and tricks and telling you which bits you can safely ignore. Follow me for more. This is Jersey. It is Jersey. Um, very quickly, <coughs> because this is just a setup for the reflection. So again, we're putting the horizon line, some interesting things happening in rocks. Again, cold shadows. And then um, a water line. Now, if we were doing perfect reflections on a still day, we would have You know, something like that as our reflections, but we haven't got that. We've got um, jumbled up water. It's not rough, but it's there's enough breaks and bends in it to be an interesting, um, an interestingly bent mirror. Um, again, we've got perspective in the foreground. So, looking down at our feet, we've got all our interesting perspective, and then as we come up towards the horizon line, which is always flat, our ripples get less and they get more intense and they get pushed closer together and then other stuff happens with them. So with my eyes narrowed, I'm gonna dip into a bit of blue and I'm just looking for the darkest places in the sea and it doesn't matter what color it is, I'm just trying to get it to the right depth and intensity. I'm videoing this so you can have that one if you like. <laughs> um, I've got some turquoises and some blues and I'm gonna stick those into my, my water. And again, it's exactly the same rules as we were doing in our demos there in, in our workshop. The bits of the wave facing me are darker. And the bits of the waves facing the headland are picking up all that bright blue sky behind the headland. And also those pretty mad colours that are in the headland. And what I must remember to do in the video is stick the little reference picture up so that we know what we're painting from. Unusually, this is a reference photo I took myself on a boat. So. so the darkest bits facing us, the bent part of the mirror facing us, that's the dark overhead sky. If you look into them enough, you'll probably actually see um, my reflection because I'm leaning off the front of a boat taking a photo. Somewhere in there is going to be a reflection of me. But again, it will get spherized and homogenized like in the back of a spoon because each of those mirrors is very, very bent. Now the far bit of the sea, so that's the other side of the mirror, is picking up that really bright sky. Again, exactly what we've just been doing. Mostly white, bags and bags of titanium white, barely any blue, over the horizon line. Got really bright sky low down, and it gets bluer the further up we go. And so it's thinner, because it's that siped edge of the water. there is some blue in it. And then we get into the reflection of the land there.
and here you're allowed some blends. As long as there is a massive marked difference between the highlight reflection and the dark reflections. But because this mirror is all bent up, they're all getting involved with each other. But there's still a system here. And the moment I step outside that system, my reflections are going to stop working. So exactly the same system that we've just demonstrated with our linear, much easier to understand waves is going on here. Now, because the headland's higher here, it's getting involved. There's less of this very bright sky and there's more of the mid blue sky, which is that mid sky. Remember over your head, the, the sky up behind you is really dark cobalt blue, but there's that mid sky. And again, when you get into the reflections of the headland, it almost disappears because we get into headland colors. Right, let's stick some headland colours on and then we can drag them down. So, blue in our shadows, our headland is a medium distance away. So I'm paddling around in the black that I've made, but I'm also sticking some more blue with it. My horizon line has to be flat-ish. <laughs> so crevasses, fissures, fissures, is that the word? Rocks are pretty random, so letting the brush dance around a bit. Complete washout, and then we're going into this high orangey white. Um, Scott Christensen, Scott S. Christensen, if you look him up on Instagram. He's kind of the master of painting rocks, really. There's another Scott Christensen that paints horrible dolphins. So make sure you get the right one. Um, have a look at how different that rock tone is. The two are going to get involved with each other much later. But at the moment... Just keep going until they look like rocks, really. Where's my sun coming from? The sun's coming from over there, isn't it? And then there's already broken reflections creeping down onto the, the thin light side. I'm still staying within this system of these waves I've already built. And I constructed them quite fast.
but all of these reflections are staying in the in within the rules I've already set. So I'm going to put the darks in as well in a minute. They're less critical. Remember the darks take on the colour of the water underneath. And I'm putting a bit of wide angle lens in because that's what my reference photo is. And it's easier, it's a sort of quick and dirty way of injecting some exciting perspective into the painting. So those dark reflections, got green in them. Uh, let's stick some green together. That's a dark green. All right, let's have a bit of that. That's going in the same place as my highlight white rocks. It's gonna feel alien at first. And it's on the same par with the white rocks. Because it's such a contrast, it's, it makes you want to put it in the opposite side of the wave. And the moment it goes there, it wrecks the optical illusion of a reflection. It's getting windy out there. Have a look at those shadows of the fissures. fissures. And they're going in the same place as all my other coloured reflections too. Now this is wet sticky paint I'm dropping over the top of previous colours. Again, because we're going at the speed of light, there is still a bit of measuring of colour consistency going into these. As we get up to the source of the reflection, we're going to get closer together. But still within that construct of The edge of a flat acrylic brush is quite good for these. And as we get down towards our feet perspective, let's just put more bends and layery perspectives in. Stand back a bit. Right, really need some greens, so I know what I'm doing now. Um, bags of cadmium yellow, loads and loads of it. Awful dry cadmium yellow. I'm going to stick some white in with it, desaturate it a bit, brighten it up. Not that mental. Uh, yeah, about that. Let the brush dance around a bit. And we've got browns and oranges and all sorts of things going on in this. It's not a recognisable headland. Mm. 
and all of these colours are going to be answered in the reflections. So keep some sort of note as to where you left them. Exciting darker shadows. Right, I'm going to make up a really wet, sloppy blue sky once I've got all of the green out of my brush. Bags of white. I've got a thalo blue, I've got king's blue deep, mostly more white. Because I'm going to go in with one hit and just chop out that headland now. So this is, remember the sky gets much paler down towards the horizon. There you go. Is it always better to drop the sky in afterwards? Yeah. Rather than, I, because otherwise sometimes it looks a bit false, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, if I'm out plein air, I'll tend to white out the sky with a wash of white titanium first. Right. Just because I like to balance the, color, uh, balance the values as we yeah. climb up. But because the speed we're going today, I'm just doing it with one big thick yeah. sort of blodge of quite opaque paint. So that is really thick, but I'm not going to go back over it with anything, so it doesn't matter. I'm not really going to go in and edit it at all. And what greys do you what gray do you mix to do the you know the uh, prime the board? That's just white gesso with a big blob of uh, Payne's grey acrylic in it because okay. the gesso is all acrylic yeah. okay. you can do oils over acrylics you can't go the other way so there's all right there's my sky uninteresting no clouds in it or anything it's complicated the issue so that blue sky I've still got some left again it's still in that system wherever I've got it in there It's going to get brighter as we get closer to it. Try and conform to some more perspective as well. Perspective as well. Right, the thing we're really missing out on now is all those high bright greens. So I'm gonna go in and grab all that green and stick a bit of white with it. More juice, just gonna get let it let go over wet paint. Do you ever let um, your pictures dry in between or not? Or yeah, if I'm working much larger than this. Yeah, um, because you'd have to really. Yeah. If you want that intensity of colour at that scale. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and what advantages or drawbacks is that then? What would you um, trying to work onto a dry canvas is really dispiriting. Yeah. <laughs> it makes <Okay>. me miserable. <laughs> I tend, I, quite often I'll oil up and I'll just soak the whole thing in a bit of linseed oil or something right. just so that the brush will start moving over it right. it's really yeah. difficult to get going yeah. but if you're working with a lot of thin layers um yeah a big brush over it try and get it all wet and then spend a couple of hours reworking it but but you the intensity then why is that that you you, you need another layer when this dries it's going to go a little bit dull um, at this scale it doesn't make much difference you tend to find on the bigger ones you'll really notice it 
those darks that were glistening and quite intense have suddenly become quite flat. Yeah. Um, and if you hit it two or three times, I mean, one option is to varnish it, but I hate varnishing. So another option is just to give yourself two or three more layers. Your dark reds, your browns, they'll have a lot more luster and depth to them. You don't have to do, you don't have to kind of do it redoing the whole thing. It's just pulling out those. It's just the bits you fancy, but once you go over it, if some bits are much more dark and intense than others, you'll notice. Um, and then you'll have to go, you know. Cool. There we go. That's brilliant. A headland and some reflections. Isn't it? And then the rest of it is all about darkening and intense, mm. intensifying those colours within that system. So that's exactly the same system that we created for our, our water. Let's stick a little bit of turquoise into it just to make it a bit more exciting. There you go. There's a lot happening in that water, but it's just, it takes a ton of practice just to dissect what's going on in the water. It's so interesting. You saw these, I looked at it, then I looked at it properly, and you, you saw that you could see the. Squinting the whole time. I paint with my eyes all screwed up. <laughs> doesn't play well with my OCD. I was thinking like this. I'm squinting. I'm squinting. Can't help yourself. Yeah. Just watch you do that and 